I'll move to the inspirational speech uh, by Maria Deng. She is a grassroots peace builder from the Philippines, um, has dedicated nearly three decades of her life to using the conflict transformation paradigm in working with partners in Mindanao and in post-independent Timor-Leste. Uh, Deng is one of the longest serving facilitators at MPI, uh, who started in 2000 and continued until 2017. It's so good to have you with us, Deng, and we look forward to hearing from you. Okay, so I was given the task to inspire and I hope I can inspire. So I titled this presentation, The Importance of Having a Dream and Seeing That Dream Through. In 1998, a group of 10 struggling dreamers went to the United States to learn peace building. I used the term struggling because at the time, peace seemed so elusive for our Mindanao. But there was the start of the Bishop's Ulama Forum, and we were so determined to work for a better Mindanao. And so we studied brainstormed, ate and worked together to build a small team. And we dared to dream big. It was at the house of John Paul Lederach where we discussed of a possible mini institute and the seed germinated. We dreamed of having an institute where Mindanaoans can learn about doing peace. In my case, in my eyes, I was becoming an expert in working for justice, but I did not know how to build peace. MPI started in 2000 for Mindanaoans only, but many institutions heard about this and asked for participants from other countries to be invited. For two or three years, we kept classes exclusively for Mindanao grassroots leaders separate from the international students, yet joint activities were organized. It was later decided to put up a separate institute for the grassroots peace builders and the grassroots peace building learning course or GPLC was born. The ties remained though for years. MPI students were exposed in areas where GPLC graduates were, thus our MPI as we know this today. When the Moro Islamic Liberation Front signed the comprehensive agreement on the Bangsa Moro with the government, there was rejoicing even as there were tensions and some fears. Maybe one day we will learn about how MPI contributed to the growth of peace activists within and among their ranks. On the other hand, the military and government agencies rejoiced with this development. And again, maybe one day, we will learn how MPI contributed to the growth of peace soldiers and peace workers within their organization. A group of dreamers dreamed and pursued that dream and made it into a reality. Pope Francis in his new encyclical Fratelli Tutti speaks of the importance of dreaming, dreaming of a better world as children of one home, the mother earth. And John Paul and Angie Lederach in their book, The Moral Imagination, guides us to the importance of having a vision even in the midst of violence around us. Imam Asim Khan, based in London, shares the importance of being clear about your vision in leading one to be successful. Identifying success as in the present, as well as doing things right, so you end up also a success in the afterlife. And there will be many more resources in each of our religious and cultural traditions. But there is the reality of these dreams being shattered. There are forces that prey on or attack one's dreams, often without any warning signs. The COVID-19 pandemic is one such force. Who would ever think 
that we will be tied to our homes, refrain from hugging and shaking hands, no workshops and seminars, and he even had our formal prayers and worship suspended. Nobody was prepared for COVID. No nation or leader was prepared. Yes, there were responsive leaders and they seemed successful for a while and then COVID reared its head again and bang, a second wave. We managed, we had our online classes, Zoom meetings, work from home mode, buy and sell and barter trades boomed in the neighborhood as we tried to help each other. We discovered new hobbies and talents, spent more time with the kids and parents, meditated and gained inner strength for a few weeks and months. It was okay. And then weeks turned into months. Some get so frustrated, they lash out against the vulnerable. The blame game happened. Conspiracy theories fly all around. Fights break over fights break out over dwindling resources. Debates between researchers and practitioners, scientists and politicians. And where do we put ourselves into this? We can take the time to review our peace building roles and still perform this. The digital space, the internet is such a powerful platform for us. Sadly, some might abuse this. I will speak of two roles that I have managed to perform while being housebound in quarantine for eight months now. Being an advocate. What is the role of an advocate? To stand and push forward a cause for justice. How did I prepare myself to do that? I read a lot on issues and I read to understand what saddens me is when I see in some Facebook accounts how one unfriends the other because they belong to two different political platforms. One person said, to keep my sanity, I unfriend them. And in my mind, I go, man, there will always be people who will not see the same way as you see things. If you keep erasing them from your life, well, for me, that will be a sad thing. I like to know how others who are not like me think and why. Number two, I always remind myself to be respectful. I have learned, learned this in our negotiation and dialogue classes. Focus on the issue and do not attack the person. Demeaning and dehumanizing a person for me is not peaceful. When a person is dehumanized and demeaned, I believe it, disre it disrespects the creator. I use the platform wisely and review my post before hitting the button. I learned this the hard way. So I check, is my post engaging or is it judgmental? Is my post encouraging people to discuss and explore the problem and find solution? Or is it just fanning the flame of anger and more frustration? Can I sleep better after posting or will my conscience bother me? Second, being a facilitator. What is the role of a facilitator? Often seen as a bridge builder, the facilitator takes the middle ground. There are pros and cons to being a facilitator. And in my mind, the person's character should be like still water in the lake, calm, accepted by all parties to the conflict. A stone can be thrown and ripples can be created and then calmness will return. And if you know me, I'm really trying hard to be like that because I am not like that. And yet, the facilitator needs to be dynamic, can think on one's feet, can come up with creative ideas to break an impasse. And yes, I am a work in progress in that area. And how do I prepare myself for this? 
I use the digital space. I try to know the issue from all angles and sides. So I use the chat box a lot and the private messages a lot. I use words that connect and hopefully not biased with anyone. I try to be very respectful of all persons. I remember John Paul Lederach's advice, if everyone is against one person, take the hat of that person so you can try to feed back to them and then they become more clear about why they think that way about that person. So I try to adapt that. And then I use the digital platform to inspire. There could be some other ideas, and surely all of you can contribute more to how we, as peace builders, can make this world better, a better place now, not waiting for after the pandemic, but now. Let me just end with some nuggets of wisdom. It's my white hair, so I think I am entitled to a few wisdom things. Let us learn one thing from the Japanese. The Japanese art of kintsugi or golden joinery is also known as kintsukuroi. Did I pronounce that right? When a precious piece of base is broken, the pieces are put together with sticking materials dusted with silver or gold, having a beautiful end product of your precious piece, more beautiful than the original. When our dreams are shattered, when our partner community's plans fall apart, do we use golden joinery or we add fuel to the fire or mud to muddle the issue further? Peace with small and peace with large. When we speak of work for justice and peace, are we just looking at the bigger picture and forgetting the smaller issues of justice and peace at home? with the family, in our organization, in our community. You, you can say, bah, I can't be bothered with that. It's so trivial. But remember, our character counts the most. What we do when the limelight is not on us is as important as when we are at the center of the stage. My experience as a peace builder in the making has been so challenged in the past eight months by living with a 14-year-old grandniece who often tests her grandmother's patience and her mother's resources. She storms into my room with this and that about the concerns of her world. And I do try to listen, even as I'm often confused by the terms she is using, like TBH. I was like, what's TBH? Well, it is, to be honest, or NGL, not gonna lie, or FO, falling out. Well, for me, FO was finance officer, but good gracious, that's her language. But I treasure these moments and use this as teaching moments about life and being more tolerant and peaceful. She has also become my source of joy. As I was finishing the slides for this presentation, she came into my room and said, Ibo, I am so proud of me. And I said, I am proud of you too. Now tell me why. And she answered in a very excited voice. I took a bath. Can't you see? Okay. So she is funny. Second to the last, brave. The present environment can easily defeat the faint-hearted. There are so many problems around the world. Hunger, poverty, physical violence, corruption, human and natural destruction, human trafficking, and people in quarantine who cannot live on their own and thus you have rising cases of suicide that one can feel so overwhelmed. If you have the capacity resp to respond to this in any way, through your office and position, through your organization, please do so. If not, 
in my case, I use whatever influence I have and send messages to friends and contacts, and then I pray a lot. Last but not the least, cultivate hope. It is so easy to drown in the negativity of the world, but when one has hope, one seeks always the silver lining behind the dark clouds. Never let the flame of hope die in our hearts, and having a dream sustains that hope. Let me end with an excerpt from the Caritas Australia Prayer for Justice and Peace. Grant us, O oh God, a vision of your world as your love will have it, a world where the weak are protected and none go hungry and poor, a world where peace is built with justice and justice is guided by love. Amen. Let us all do our part to co-build that world. Padayon MPI. Thank you. Mm -hmm.